Good evening and welcome to a special bulletin from the Angry Astronaut. Um, just a couple of days ago, as many of you know, I released a video that's sort of unusual on this channel, but something that I talk about pretty regularly, and that is the appearance of astronomical phenomena that suggest the possible existence of interstellar civilizations. And by the way, the reason I'm not wearing my sunglasses right now is in an effort to try to be taken seriously becomes when it comes right down to it and incidentally this update this additional information actually came out in a paper that was published more than a year ago and yet really hasn't hit the news wires at all like the other updates i gave you and the reason for this is if you start talking about aliens and interstellar civilizations outside of the bounds of science fiction generally the scientific community likes to lump you in with the same group of people who believe in Bigfoot and the abominable snowman. No, I'm actually going to be a little bit more specific about that. People who believe that the abominable snow monster of the north from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is real. And yeah, I, I'm not really exaggerating here. That is how close-minded the scientific community is being right now about the possible existence of extraterrestrial civilizations because the data that I found after some long researching tonight... Uh, suggests very strongly, in my opinion, that what has been observed at Tabby Star and now has also been observed at more than a dozen other stars is a strong indicator of an interstellar civilization pretty much right in our cosmic backyard. And if that sounds like an extreme claim, well, you're going to hear the data in just a moment. Oh yes, and another quick note, please subscribe. I just went through my analytics of the video I released two days ago. Less than 16,000 people watched up to this point, which is still a pretty good number as far as I'm concerned. Thank you for watching. But if all of the unsubscribed people who watched that video were to subscribe to my channel, I would have actually already hit 100K. That's how many people who watch my channel still have not subscribed. Please subscribe. Getting so close and also the 100K K challenge depends on me being solidly at 100k. Let's move on to what's going on with Boyajian star and now more than a dozen other stars as well. First of all, a couple of updates about Boyajian star itself. Number one, the entire star seems to have dimmed now for a sustained period of time rather than abrupt dips. Now, this is not a huge amount of dimming. We're only talking about 1% or so, but that dimming remains consistent and ongoing, indicating that whatever is causing the dimming is no longer orbiting in one general location, but actually causing a sustained dimming, in other words, orbiting the entire star. Now, once again, it's difficult to determine what this means with only a 1% dimming, but again, this sort of thing doesn't happen with main sequence stars like Boyajian star. In addition to that, observations have now been made suggesting that whatever is causing these periodic dips may be becoming more dense. In other words, maybe not so much like smoke or dust after all but it gets even more complicated than that, and a hell of a lot more spooky. In a paper by Edward G. Schmidt of the Department of Physics and Astronomy at the University of Nebraska in Lincoln, entitled A Search for Analogs of KIC 8462852 Boyajian Star, an effort was made to try to find other stars that might mirror the same kind of behavior that Boyajian Star has been demonstrating demonstrating during the time that it's been observed. It was an exhaustive study of 485 stars of all different varieties, different locations, and also, of course, different classifications from red dwarfs to main sequence stars, pretty much every type of star you can think of. And out of those 485, 15 candidates were discovered. And this is where things start to get really spooky, because nine of those 15 candidates 
candidates were found to be clustered in the same region of space that Boyajian star is located in. And as you can see from these diagrams, the cluster was incredibly close, at least as far as galactic distances are concerned. Granted, we are talking about sometimes tens or hundreds of parsecs here, but given the fact that there's over a million stars of the appropriate luminosity to also have been surveyed within this same region of space that are either much closer or much further away, this clustering seems entirely too close and too striking to be a coincidence. And by the way, the top figure shows how the stars are arranged from a side view, and the bottom figure shows how the stars are arranged from a top-down view. And from every perspective, it is obvious that these stars are amazingly close together. And that's not the only weird coincidence going on here. In addition to that, of all the stars surveyed, the 15 candidates that were discovered to have light dimming patterns similar to Boyajian star were also similar types of stars. That is to say, main sequence, either F-type stars like Boyajian star or G-class stars like ours. In other words, stars that are perfectly well suited to life as we understand it. G-class stars are better than F-class stars, but nevertheless, both classes of stars would be attractive to a species similar to our own. Now, some people have theorized that perhaps the dimming is being caused by interstellar dust between ourselves and Boyajian star, but given the fact that the dimming has only been detected with these 15 stars, all of which are the same class of star and with no other stars that are in the same region of space, that explanation falls flat on its face as well. And it is at this point that the author of this paper begins to explore the possibility of extraterrestrial civilizations. Quote, Since no fully satisfactory explanation for the behavior of Boyajian star and by extension the Dipper candidates has been found, it is premature to try to explain the existence of the clump. However, the possibility that extraterrestrial civilizations might have developed interstellar travel and expanded beyond their original planetary systems has been widely discussed in connection with the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, for example, in connection with the Fermi Paradox. If this is actually possible, it could lead to a clump of stars with inhabited planets over an extended region of space. With these considerations in mind, I suggest that the dippers in the clump and other stars in the same region would be appropriate targets for SETI searches." Unquote. So this is very rare for people who publish these kinds of papers that aren't directly associated with UFO societies or something like that to begin to talk like this. But obviously the evidence is becoming so compelling that even the Department of Physics and Astronomy at the University of Nebraska is beginning to wonder whether these phenomena are starting to look artificial. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, and please stay tuned for further updates States. Also, hit those notification bells, and as always, stay angry about space!